Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can create some audio responsive effects with After Effects and Element 3D. In this tutorial, we're going to make use of the text animator along with an expression selector in order to randomize the bounces of the text with the sound file. And using that text layer, we're going to extrude that in Element 3D and then have a look at how we can create just some simple scene in which the lighting is also driven by the sound. If that sounds interesting, let's get started. All right, so the first thing is we need to take our sound files and add them to the project. Now, this will work with any type of sound file, but in this case, I actually have a music file that has separate channels for the bass, drums, instruments, and then a full mix as well. If you don't have this, it's all right, but you will have a little bit more work to do when you're determining what range of values to use for your keyframes. For this, I'm just gonna take the full mix and add it to it as a composition. And I'm gonna right click over this, go to comp settings and just change this to full HD. We're at 30 FPS. Then we're gonna go and add some text. So for the text, we're gonna open this up, go to animate. If you've seen some of my previous videos about the text animator, we go more in depth with this, but we're just gonna grab a scale animator and then we're gonna grab an expression selector. Open up this expression selector and then we're gonna add our expression to amount. So hold down alt to click on the stopwatch for amount. Now, this is where we're going to associate the expression with the keyframes. And in order to do that, we need to actually convert the sound file into keyframes. I have separate channels. This is gonna make it a little bit easier to work with and at least to demonstrate the effect that I'm going for. So I'm gonna actually use a drums channel. If you don't have this, as I said, it's fine. You can go ahead and do this the same way, but it does make it a little easier to do. We're gonna right click, go to keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. And this will create an audio amplitude null object. I'm gonna rename this to be drums in case we have multiple of these files later. I'm actually gonna take both of these files and just move them up here. And just a note on this, make sure that when you're converting your keyframes, you actually have the sound icon on and you are using the full work area. If you click you and look at your keyframes and it stops off or it didn't do anything, check to make sure that the icon is on and then your work area is you know the full length of your composition so in the audio amplitude null object i really don't care about the left and right channels so i'm just going to delete those and now we're just looking at the both channels combined slider click the graph editor and then you can see after effects has added a keyframe for every single frame that corresponds to the amplitude of the audio file so we're going to actually come and look at this graph a little bit later and then determine what range of keyframes we want to use for our animation. To get rid of this little null object box, I'm just going to hide the layer. It makes it a little nicer to work with. All right, so at this point, we can delete the expression in our expression selector and then use the pick whip to attach to our both channels slider. And then we can start adding an expression to this. So by default, if you just leave this as is, and then you come down to your scale or, or whatever attribute you have down here, I'm gonna unlock this and do something like 50 and 150. You also wanna make sure that this sums up to 200 if you're trying to conserve mass. And now you can see that the sound is reacting to the audio. I'm gonna trim my work area just by clicking B and then N. So you can see it's like kind of bouncing up every time there's like a, a, a drum hit. But the problem is it's also picking up a lot of like micro jittery movements that I, I don't really care for and I want to remove those. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to our audio amplitude drums, click on the slider control and then click the graph editor. Let me zoom in here on the frames that we're interested in. So I'm just going to be working with this section. And the sound goes all the way from around 11, an amplitude of around 11 or maybe well, I guess just less than nine there, all the way up to about 90. So what I want to do here, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and select the slider stopwatch and delete this expression. I want to select the, the range of amplitude where I want keyframes to be used for. So in this, we're going to use an ease expression. And the first parameter of the ease expression is value, followed by the low bound. And the low bound is the point at which we want to actually start picking up sound. So for this, I'll do something like 40, then do a comma, and then the maximum range, the high bound. So I'll do something like 90. And then you need to figure out what the output is gonna be. So this is the range that's actually gonna be applied to our keyframes. And then we need to determine what output this is. 
So you can literally do whatever values you want here, but I would recommend just doing a, a, like a normalized value of between zero and one. The reason is if you have a specific effect, like you are doing something like scale, like we are for that specific channel, we would need a value between something like a hundred and then maybe 150 if you didn't want it to go lower, for example. But if you use something else like rotation and you attach a rotation channel to this same information, then for every single keyframe, you could go from between 100 and 150 degrees. And that might be like ridiculous. So what I would suggest is just normalizing this between zero and one and then dealing with the specific channel in that specific channel's expression. This will become a little bit more evident in a moment. So what we've just done, we've attached that, we've normalized the values between zero and one. So if we scrub through this, you can see these numbers here are gonna be changing very slightly. They're gonna be changing between zero and they almost get up to one. Now looking at our animation, we can barely see anything because the scale isn't really doing anything. It's too low. So let's come down here and then multiply this by a value of 100 and you can really see the effect of that sound now. You'll notice this is less jitter though, especially in the lower values. When the sound is a little bit softer, you're not getting as much jitter. What I'd like to be able to have is each letter or each character here kind of reacts a little bit differently. If you're not interested, you can kind of skip this step, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm just going to enter down a couple times and what we want to do is basically access the index of all of these letters. And for that, we're going to create a new variable. Let's call this my index. And then we're going to set that equal to time minus uh, text index. And text index is a function that returns the index of this character. It is not a custom variable. We're accessing an, an After Effects function there. We're going to divide that by some kind of value here. So for this, we're just going to say one for right now, even though that you don't actually need to divide by one, but we're going to go ahead and add a slider control for that in a moment. Do a semicolon there. And then we're going to do another variable called this react. And for this, we're going to take this temp variable and we're actually going to rename this temp variable just to be audio. This is the actual audio keyframe. So it makes more sense to call that audio. So we'll say that react is equal to audio. And then we'll multiply that by a function like just a, a, basically a cosine function. A cosine function goes between one and negative one and always returns a value within that range and it goes on forever. So in this case, it's it's useful for us to be able to just oscillate through different indices. But because we don't want any negative values, we're going to use an absolute value expression. That's math.abs. And then inside this function, we're going to call a cosine function. And inside the cosine function, we'll pass in my index as the parameter. And just to make sure that the value is always going to be above one, we'll just say plus one. It looks like I actually have a syntax error there. Let me remove that parentheses. So what we need to do now is take react and replace this here for the X and Y parameters. We actually don't have a Z parameter, so we can just remove the Z parameter. And now let's look at what we've got. So now what we've got is all the letters are kind of reacting independently. They're kind of grouped up. So if we wanted to change this to be like the entire word, for example, bouncing up and down, if you divide the text index by a very large number, you basically get the entire word to react at once. Likewise, if you do a very, very small number, you'll get all the letters to be much more separated from each other. So if you like that kind of effect, you want them all to be slightly different, I would suggest doing this. If you, you're not interested in this at all, what you can do is basically just remove my index and then in the cosine expression, just pass in time, but don't bother with the text index function. In order to control this a little bit better though, I want to grab a slider control. I'm going to grab a slider control and just add that to the karaoke text. I'll just call this text index. And instead of putting numbers here that we have to remember to come into the expression to change, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to put this in parentheses, grab this slider control, and because the slider technically can be zero, you can't divide by zero. So we're just going to divide it by plus one, and then you'll never get an error. So now we can change this value to be literally whatever we want. We just have to change it there and we'll get different groupings of text that bounces up and down. For this to really make a difference, you really want to do some like small value, like something like that. We get groups of them to kind of go up and down separately. If you want very noticeable differences, you can do a very low value. But just playing around with this, this will give you different results. I'm going to leave mine at two for right now. And then I'm going to add some extra properties to this. Let's go to add property and then let's do position. 
and then we'll do skew, and then I'll also do rotation. Now for position, we could do something like 20, so it bounces up. For skew, we could do something like negative 10, and then for rotation, maybe positive 10. If we lower this text index a little bit more, it might be a little bit more obvious. So basically, that's the kind of effect we're getting. With motion blur, that'll look a little bit more natural, but you can play around with the range of values up here that you're using or whatever you'd like to get that effect. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna close down that. We're gonna grab a new solid. Let's type in element, click OK. And then we're gonna grab an element effect. So right away, we're gonna go into custom layers, custom text and masks, and then we're gonna load in the karaoke text. Now I'm gonna take this karaoke text, just drag this off to the side here. Everything's relative with text expression, so nothing changes. You can just move the entire position, that's fine. Go back to the element layer and then click on scene setup. So inside scene setup, you wanna click extrude. Now, if nothing happens when you click extrude, it just means that you didn't add a custom text to mask, make sure you did that. So what we need to do now, scroll down, to get to alignment and then we're going to say bottom so this is actually resting on the ground here and we're going to grab plane and for the plane we'll just scale this up like 2000 percent and then we'll click ok we need to make a new camera and for this i'm using a focal length of let's say 24. click c we're going to just raise this up a little bit and we can see that this is reacting in the same way as the letters there. So this is pretty cool. You can use the text animator with Element 3D. So the, one of the coolest things with Element 3D is that you can change the text, call this Disco instead, and then everything is just going to kind of seamlessly update. So you can basically change the words or whatever you want, and then you don't have to worry about reanimating anything. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do is actually take out the O. I'll put two spaces there and I want to put like a disco ball there. So let's take this text layer and we're going to just hide that for now. And then we're going to go back into element and go into our scene setup. Inside scene setup, we're going to grab a new box. I'm going to drag this down and then we're going to set this to group two. So what we want to do here, let me quickly just explain this. Um, let's change this to wireframe mode. We currently have 204 faces. There's a lot of detail here. And I'm going to have like several hundred of these boxes. So what I want to do is go down to chamfer, change that to zero, and then we've reduced our faces down to 12. So in terms of computer workload, we've just basically improved performance. Change this back to shaded. And for this to be seen better, I'm going to go into physical materials and then I'll add a chrome material. So it's going to basically show the light a little bit better. All right, so next what we're going to do is go into group two. We're going to open up the particle look and particle replicator. But first we're going to do particle replicator. Change the replicator shape to be a sphere. And then for the count, we'll do something like 512. We get like a big ball. And then we're going to go down to the shape scale and do something like two. And then next we, the particles themselves are actually too large here. So we're going to go down to particle size and do something like 0.25. So we get a much smaller ball. And then all we have to do is basically just take the position X, Y, and then just move over the X position. And then we can just crank up the height a little bit and then we have ourselves a disco ball. I'll just say 1080 there, just make that a nice even number, and like 480 for that one. Now, for this disco ball, I want this always to be spinning. Let's go down to rotation, add an expression to the Y rotation, so I'll click on the stopwatch, and we're just gonna do time times 50, and we'll get this to spin. I actually want that to go the other way around, so let's do negative 50, there we go. All right, so next thing is we need to get this to bounce up and down. So let's go up to the position X, Y. I'll click on the position X, Y, and we just need to open a bracket, type in the X number, do a comma, then type in the Y value, plus then we're gonna attach the pick whip to our audio channel, the both channels slider control. And then we can come back up here and then just close the bracket. And now every time the text bounces up and down, this will too. By default though, this is not really gonna be enough. This is barely changing the values. So let's do a value of negative 50. And we have to do negative because lower Y values are actually higher. So we actually want it to go higher up. So we need a lower value. But now you can see this is bouncing up and down as well. Another thing that would be pretty cool for this, if you scroll down into replicator effects, this is going to be under Particle Replicator. Under the Surface Offset, let's crank up the Surface Offset. And what we'll do, we'll just copy this expression that we just attached. We'll all click on the Surface Offset and just paste in that expression. So now all the little particles, all those little cubes kind of push out every time it goes up. 
like multiply that by we could probably multiply that by two something like that that looks pretty cool we'll, we'll just leave that like that for now so this is looking pretty cool there's a few other things that we can do though before we actually start making the materials kind of work together and i want to collapse the element layer and then i'm going to grab a new solid and we're just going to call this audio spectrum texture so the width and height here we're going to do 4k by 4k and then we're going to pre-compose this so in this case there, we have no attributes there so it doesn't really matter and then we want to double click this and now we're looking at our comp position so here we're going to grab an audio spectrum effect audio waveform is very similar that's a good effect as well basically what this is going to do is going to give us bars that react to our sound so at the start point we'll just say zero so it's going to be the x starting point and then the x ending point 496. we're going to take a copy of the full mix of the sound drive this down I'm actually going to turn this volume off there. Then for the audio layer, we'll say the name of the track, and then we can see some reaction there. We need to make this look a little bit better though. So let's go into our max height and we'll just crank that up a little bit easier to see. Now I'd actually like this to be in a circle. Go into a polar coordinates, grab our polar coordinates, let's set this up to 100%, and then we'll change the type to rectangular to polar, and that will give us a circle. For the hue interpretation, we can do something like 90 degrees, give us some extra colors there. And then it's just a case of playing around with the thickness. We do maybe something like around 10 there is gonna give us a pretty nice result. And if you want this to be one direction, like it just goes around the, the perimeter of this and doesn't go in, you can change the side option to just side B and it will just go that one way. And then you could make some duplicates to this as well. So I could duplicate this and then I could say I wanted to do instead of these vertical lines, I just want to do dots and grab a transform effect here. Then I can just scale this up a little bit. And then I can do another one and then just scale this down. Something like that. Looks pretty cool. I'm going to jump back into our main composition here. Then we're going to turn this layer off. And I want to add this to my element scene. So to do that, we're going to go into element. And we don't actually need custom text and masks open anymore. So let's close that. And instead, we're going to go and open custom texture map. So make sure you don't put this in the wrong one. And then we'll load in the audio spectrum texture. And then we'll say effects and masks. It's important that you do this if you want to make changes to the composition and have them propagate through. Then we'll go back into the scene setup. Okay, so inside the group one folder, let me just rename this to be ground plane. And this is going to be the text. And then we're going to add a new plane. Now for this plane, this is going to be our audio. And just to see this more clearly, I'm going to take the ground, turn this off. And we're going to scale this up quite a lot and just move this over so it's going to be kind of like right underneath the disco ball go into the default texture here and then we're going to look for illumination click on non-set then we're going to click up the drop down arrow and then select custom layer one you can see this is the correct comp and then click okay next we're going to scroll down here to illumination set this to be a hundred percent i don't want any of the rest of this showing so i'm going to take diffuse color down to black and I'm also going to go and just turn off glossiness, specular multiplier, and then the environment multiplier so we don't get any kind of interactions with shadows or anything. Next, we're going to scroll all the way down here, set the blending mode to add, and then we want to turn off receive shadows, cast shadows, turn off AO, and turn the AO amount to zero. Next, we can turn on our ground layer again, and then this audio spectrum one, what we want to do is just on the position here, just at like 0.1 but slightly above it so next let's put a texture on the ground let's open up the ground default texture i actually have pro shaders so i will be using these if you don't have pro shaders you can make your own or you can find your own textures and i want something dark like this ground stone since i plan to be pretty close up the texture kind of loses quality so let's go to, back to the ground object scroll down to uv mapping we'll just add some uv repeats tighten up that texture a little bit for the reflect mode down here, we're actually going to change this to be mirror surface. It's going to reflect the text and we're just going to leave the rest of the settings as they are. Let's add some material to the text. For this, I'll add some metal material. That works pretty well. Now for the reflect mode of this, we're going to scroll down and change this to be spherical. And then for the box model here, we'll do the same thing then click OK. So a couple things to make this render look a little bit nicer. Let's scroll down to render settings and let's open up lighting and then turn off use comp lights. I, I don't want to use the comp lights at all. Let's go into shadows. We'll enable shadows in case we want to add any other lights later. Just always do that. Also go into ambient occlusion, turn on ambient occlusion, 
and change the mode to ray tracing. And then you can see the AO makes a pretty big difference on the quality of the render there. So to make the spectrum on the ground kind of pop, what we're gonna do, go back to our audio texture here, and we're gonna add a glow effect. Specifically, I'm using an effect called Real Glow. This is not part of After Effects, it's a plugin, but it uh, works a lot better than Glow. You can definitely do the same type of thing with Glow, but Real Glow has more of a natural fall off. And I think I'm gonna tighten these up a little bit, double click this, and I'm gonna take the scale in a little bit more, grab an the transform effect for that center one something more like that i think is going to look a little bit better and i think actually what i'm going to do here is i'm, I'm going to increase the height maybe something like 8500 on all of these let's crank up that thickness a value around 30. i think that will look a little bit better and i'll go ahead and make the same changes to these other layers I'll just make it show up a little bit better. There we go. And now we can actually see the reflections on the text. So this is what the spherical mapping is doing and, and that's really gonna help. So I have an idea to make the background look pretty cool. So let's grab a new solid layer. Let's call this audio wall. Again, I'm gonna be using a 4K texture. I'll just call this audio wall. Again, we don't have any attributes to move in, so that's fine. And then we'll double click this layer, go inside. Uh, for some reason, I need to go back into the comp settings here, make this into a 4K comp. It needs to be a square for this to work properly. And essentially we're gonna do the same type of thing. We're taking audio spectrum, we're gonna alter the start point to zero, end point to 496, or whatever your texture maximum is. Grab that full mix, turn it off, change the audio layer to that WAV file. And then we'll also do the same hue interpretation. And then we're gonna take the thickness. We'll do something like 30 again. I'm only gonna do side A, and then we're gonna increase the maximum height quite a bit. I do a value of around 5,000. All right, so now we can go back to our main composition and turn this off, close both of these down a little bit. Go into the element comp. And again, we're gonna go down to custom texture maps, go into layer two, and then add in that audio wall. Make sure you change this to source effects and masks, and then enter the scene setup. So for this, we're gonna create a new box, and then we're gonna scale this up fairly large, something like this. And then we're gonna go down, take the chamfer down to zero, then scroll down to the surface options and invert the normals. Okay, so we might need to scale that out a little bit so we don't see any edges a little bit later, but for now, let's just work with this. Go into our box model, and for the default material, I'm just gonna go into presets, physical, and just add a black gloss to this. I think that'll look pretty good. And then we're gonna go into illumination, change the illumination to the audio wall texture, click okay. And then we'll go down to illumination, set the intensity to 100%. And now we have audio playing on the wall in the background. We're getting a lot of reflections here. I'm actually, yeah, let's just get rid of the reflections completely. So it's kind of pointless adding a gloss material, but take the gloss down to zero, take the specularity down to zero, take the environment down to zero. So it's just, just that kind of wall of sound waves there. That'll be, that'll be fine. Uh, the next thing is the environment. So for the environment here, I'm going to go into the environment tab. If you don't have anything listed here, you might have basic 2K. I think it's all you get. You go into environment here, you can load in literally whatever type of texture you want. You can do JPEGs, PNGs, and like these aren't HDR files, but then you can also do HDR files, DDS files, or EXR files or whatever. It doesn't necessarily have to be high dynamic range for this to work. You just need some kind of texture to get color information from. So what I'm gonna do, I actually have backlight environments. So I'm gonna use one of these and I want something pretty dark, something like this. I think that's gonna look pretty good. And then I'll click okay. And now we're really seeing kind of the scene be put together just a little bit better. Got reflections going on. I think that looks a lot better. So it cycles through the hue. So on the audio wall, I also wanna add a real glow effect for that to be additive, to make this look a little bit more natural. Now, if you don't want to ever see the hard edge, you might consider putting this on a cylinder. In my case, I'm going to get pretty close up with the camera. I don't think I'm going to see that edge. I'm going to go back to this audio wall really fast. I actually am not a fan of that yellow. I think I prefer something more like that type of coloring. I'm going to lock this comp, double click the audio wall comp, drag this over, and we'll just play around with some colors, see what we can get. I quite like that actually. Like I don't mind kind of the more pinkish orange. I just don't want it to be like yellow, yellow. I don't mind the yellow here, just not in the background. All right, we'll, we'll keep something like that for right now. Close this. All right, so let's add some basic camera animation to this. Take our camera, open this up. 
I'm only going to be demonstrating like about 300 frames here. So we'll start this on 650. So I'll do the point of interest and the position, and then I'll go down to 950 and we'll just rotate this around. Just something to give it some motion. Um, this is not really final. Uh, you guys can play around with that. What I would like to do though, is go into my camera, double click it. I would like to try adding some depth of field. And for this to really make sense, what we need to do, we'll click okay, but then we'll click on one view, switch this to two views. And then we really need to have a look at the focal plane. We'll double click the camera again, and then take the focal distance. We need to lower this. And we basically just want to keep the disco ball in focus. For the f-stop, we'll do something like 1.8. It'll give us some nice focusing on the ground. And the point of interest is what we'd have to animate between these two points because we want to make sure that disco ball is always in frame. So you might just need to tweak this. So I went ahead and just increased the focal length to a 35 millimeter lens and just reposition the camera a little bit. So a couple more things before we actually would render this out. We would definitely want to make sure we have motion blur on. So let's turn on motion blur for element. And in fact, we could go through all the other ones and add motion blur for that. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Another thing is we need to scroll down into our render settings, go down to output, we're going to turn on enhanced multi-sampling and go down to sampling and aliasing and then do subsample post effects. And that's gonna just tidy up that a little bit more. Also gonna grab an adjustment layer, just drag this up above everything. Be our CC and grain. Grab a curves effect. Just wanna add a little bit more contrast here. Pull the highlights up just a tad. Basically I just want the shadows to get a little bit darker. So a pretty subtle contrast curve there. Then I'm also gonna add some grain. And I'm going to do this very, very subtly. Change the viewing mode to final output. So I'll do intensity of like 0.5. And then I'll do the size as 0.1. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is it will just make it look a little bit more natural, especially if this area is where we're going to see banding. Because in a 32-bit working space, we don't really see a whole bunch of banding. But when we compress this down, very possible that we would see banding. So adding grain helps a little bit. So we'll do that. The last thing I want to do here is on the element layer, itself and collapse this grab a camera lens blur effect and I just want to do a very subtle value around 0.2 maybe even 0.4 just to soften up the edges very slightly so it looks a little bit nicer to look at do repeat edge pixels and then we should be good to go all right so let's have a look at the final result This render is a little bit different. I changed the background so it has some directional blur. I also softened up the grain just a little bit. For what I've shown you in this video, we've only used this drums track. You can do things like with the, the bass, you could do it with the, the instruments or whatever you want. You can also do this with a full mix. That's probably gonna be more common for people. For this, I, I really only wanted the drum hits. You need to take a little bit more time when you go into the audio amplitude and you look at the graph editor to determine what areas you want to capture. All right, so this kind of wraps up this tutorial. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. If you have any questions, post a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.